no, no. Uh oh. It's illegal. It's a copyright infringement or something. I don't know. Uh oh. It's too late. There's no turning back now. <laughs> We're in. Hey, folks. Uh, we got Daniel Kaplowitz, amazing jazz guitar player from the Philadelphia area, who I, I just, uh, just meeting and conversing with for the first time ever. Welcome. Why, thank you. It's good to be here. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, you no, know, no commute or anything. You know, just hit a couple buttons and. Yeah, I'm I'm up here in the Northern Lights uh, region. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know it's it's tough, you know, going to meetings when you're in the space station. You know, you gotta. It's a lot of planning. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh but it looks like it's coming through with with very very nice clarity um yeah well i'm right next to all the satellites <laughs> so it's like half the distance for you i heard that was part of the whole mission that he uh elon musk and jeff bezos just did up there is to you know fix that infrastructure for us just so they could stream a little better yeah always improving making things more efficient yeah so so yeah yeah it's cool it's cool and it's uh it's 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 you know it's not where i live but it's where i reside um so yeah i reached out because because i you know i've i've been watching milo's is it my it's milo's right it's, it's it's actually milo it's milo the meeting house okay yeah uh, we played there um before covid uh, me and just a, a kind of a couple friends outside when they were doing the outdoor thing but uh, I was excited to see that place get going again because yeah. I had gone there um, when it was North by Northwest. Okay. And it was, I was like, man, it's, it's such a cool room. And, and it's, an, it's also a nice part of the city. And I never really understood why it didn't, it didn't fly at that time. Um, but I remember the, the one and only show I caught there was O'Teal Burbridge oh, and, wow. and his band, The Peacemakers. Wow. And there was nobody there. That's but um, so you guys are packing the place. It looks like you know you and the team that you have a couple people working, and um, and the jam is is a is is a pretty cool thing from the video. I've been tied up at home with kids and life responsibility. I, I haven't made it there, but it looks like a pretty amazing thing you got going. Yeah, it's it's. I'm quite surprised it's taken off the way it has. It's, uh, this is this is something I've been doing for probably like eight years some capacity i used to i used to do it at dalek and it was it was way less formal you know i mean dalek is just like you know a bar with like a room like a living room that you set up in. And, and i was doing that with friends for a long time but the same concept just improv like not not playing tunes and stuff and, right and it, it started growing there and i didn't even realize really how much it was growing or how much like people were talking about it till i started doing it at milo's and and people started showing up that's great and it's it's a much bigger room i actually did stop into dalak one time for the jam and, and it was very cool um ethiopian restaurant in west philly yeah um but yeah yeah it's a, it's a great stage there and a great room so it's cool that it's being utilized it looks like it's just getting better and better from the the acts you guys are bringing in yeah and um the sound it looks like the you have some professional people running sound there and everything yeah we stepped it up you know we when we first started doing it like there was this old analog board that we were using and i was really the only guy that knew what was going on with that thing and it took me a while to figure it out and then um and then we started hiring like legit sound guys and we were talking about gear how to make everything better and eventually we, we put down the money for a digital board and then we have this one guy tom um I forget his last name but he He's like really good with with setting up sound systems. <laughs> I'm not a good lip reader, but I see what's. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you know, family. I, I, you know, I, that's why I, everything is uh, going on here at once at home. So it's a, but it's a delicate balance. We're making it work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they could join in. I, mean, I don't care. You know, the more the merrier. Oh no, you don't want that right now. No. <laughs> There'll be like too many tangents, you know, right? Yes, yes. But no, I mean, that's, that's cool. I, I was part of a band that ran a jam at the Blockley uh, mm. when that was just getting going um, mm. before it was really happening. And it was it was a lot of fun and yeah. kind of brought brought the community together and gave people an opportunity to play on a nice stage. 
you know, yeah. that they, they may not have otherwise. So, um, but that's cool. I want to talk about you and, and, and your approach to plan. You're, I mean, you're, you're, did you go, I mean, what, are you a jazz student? Are you self-taught? Uh, it's kind of a combination. I went to, I got my associate's degree in jazz performance. Um, that was, you know, that was early twenties and that was just like a two, three year degree. And I did that. And so I learned like a lot of the, a lot of the theory and the math and everything. And then uh, I didn't think I was good enough to go to music school. I was like really intimidated by it. And it's freaking expensive. You know, that, that shit is super expensive. I didn't feel like spending 40 grand a year, you know, to, <laughs> to, to learn how to play, which is something that you could just do on your own. So what I did is I just practiced a lot on my own and I started playing with R&B players and church players. So I was, I was in that scene really heavy. Um, and I started playing in Trenton. And then from Trenton, uh, that kind of branched into Willenboro and that branched into Philly. So the whole thing kind of funneled me into Philly. Ah. Yeah. And that's, that's when I, what I did when I first moved here. Again, the R&B and the, and the church thing. And I did that for a long time, quite a few years, until I realized that I didn't like it. <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah. but you gained nothing ventured nothing gained right i guess you, you, oh i mean i gained i gained a lot i was playing with amazing musicians you know uh, and that that's the thing i was in college and I, and I started playing with these guys i started hearing them they would a lot of them weren't in the music program but they would just come there and start playing piano and just like hanging out on their breaks and stuff and um i would sit in and just like want to listen to these guys because they were you know that that was something that I was hear, her hearing, and I think that's why it really. Uh, that was another reason why I didn't go to music school is because I was in there doing all this academic training and studying. And then the guys that really made me feel something were the guys that didn't know any of that, and they just played by ear. And they were just unbelievable. These keyboard players, they would they would come in there and just play a chord, and you'd just be touched, you know. Mm -hmm. They'd melt you with a chord, and. Uh, so I wanted, I really wanted to figure out where that was coming from. So that's why I gravitated towards that whole scene and those kind of players. It's yeah. I mean, the, the connection to the spiritual aspect and, and go gospel and RB, I mean, the roots of American music run, run right from there. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You seem like, I mean, you know, I, I'm a big fan of jazz and, and all different types of music. And, and for me, jazz players that I've always admired, like Grant Green, John Schofield yep. uh, um, always come from a bluesy place, you yeah. know, that they can play all over and they've mastered the instrument, but they have, they have a gritty bit of soul to them. That's yeah. um, beyond just playing scales, you know, yeah. and, and uh, you know, that, so I've always kind of been a little slanted or biased toward at least what I perceive to be bluesy influenced jazz players. Yeah. Um, like Larry Coriel. I don't know if, if you would, you know, bunch him into that category, but yeah, no, he's there. He's the same. He's, he's more raw than, than other, other guys, you know, more raw than like John McLaughlin or something, even though John McLaughlin, when he was younger, he was pretty raw. Uh, yeah. The stuff I love from him is the shock T stuff. That's, hey, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, you know, the shredding kind of, it's, it's amazing, but it loses me after not long <laughs> personally. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm exactly the same. Yeah, John McLaughlin for me, like I really never listened to Baha Vishnu because it never hit me. It was, yeah, it was too much like just like grungy math rock. I just I really didn't care. But the same like when he was on an acoustic guitar with the scalped frets and everything, uh -huh. that was crazy, unbelievable. I like that better. Yeah, something about it, man. Um it's a music is such a funny thing and how it's subjective and it's just like what what connects with one person may not with another but uh but yeah for sure man it's uh something about that lineage and Derek trucks is a big you know i'm a i'm a big fan yeah. for sure and uh and and he's just his own kind of any guy to me that's created their own voice on the instrument you know there are people that have mastered it and can play anything but you may not be able to tell one from the other right but then there's these guys that have their own signature voice and I've always admired them in a way the most. Yeah. I'm, I'm the same. I always gravitated towards, towards guys that didn't sound like anyone else. I didn't really care to. And it was like, it's their advantage and disadvantage, right? There's, there's a lot of 
guys that I hear, especially in Philly, that like go to the jazz school thing, and and they're monster players. Like you know, they can they can follow any changes and really be inside the changes, and and the math is is unbelievable. But but they just don't they don't resonate the same way. It doesn't it doesn't mean as much to me yeah. to to my ear. It's not as it's not as personal. It's it's more replicating. And, um, that's, I, I I used to think about that a lot, you know, because like you, you mentioned Schofield and, and trucks, you know, and it's like, how did they how did they find that thing? There's always these people that just have their own style. And like, I kind of feel like it's when you take two things and mash them together. You know, like Schofield kind of took like saxophone lines and mashed it together with, with grungy blues. Uh huh. You know, and and uh and trucks took Indian Carnatic music and mashed it with slide blues playing. You know, yep. so they have these like two things that mesh together to make a whole new thing. Yeah, and I mean with Derek, that's you know what's so deep, you know, for me is again getting into that idea of that lineage of American music and how even from his earliest times, his first very first recording, you'll hear something raw and simple like a one chord blues just with all the soul you could imagine, but then, you know, Mr. PC on the next tune and taken out and doing like a Coltrane cover. So it's like, it covers the gamut, you know, yeah. and it doesn't, it doesn't leave that other stuff out and say, oh, well, it's just a one chord blues because it's, a, it's so much more than that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And they're singers, right? They're, they're more singers than, than instrument players, the way they play. Yeah, Derek said he always was copping gospel vocal lines on the slide and everything. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, to get a little deep on you, but it's music. How could you not? You yeah. Know? How could yeah, you not? That's what it's all about, man. What's life without the, the excessive analyzation? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been guilty a time or two. So. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I noticed that, you know, I liked your playing right from the get-go, and you had you play with a lot of soul, you know, and, and, and good for you, man. I need to take some lessons, I think. <laughs> Good lessons, so yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, uh, I plan to get other guys from Milo on the, on the show, and and you know, I, I hope that that continues to grow. Yeah. Um, it and, will. It's it's like a bit of a runaway train, you know. Like we were we were working like you know before COVID opened up, before COVID ended. Uh, not, I guess that's not that it's really ended, yet, but but yeah, we were working like we knew that the place was special and then and then just all of a sudden it exploded it just became this runaway train and then we were like scrambling like we can't even keep up with like all the stuff we have to do but like we're still learning this shit yeah we're learning, learning on the spot yeah and it's it's i mean like you say and i know your your format is like kind of loose improv occasionally some vocalists might show up but I mean, if somebody did come up, uh, come out and had a, a song, I'm sure you guys could follow. Or do you do you discourage vocalists? Or no, we want vocalists. Uh, we just don't do tunes. Right. Yeah. So if a vocalist comes out and's like, "Let's run this tune," you guys could sure. Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, generally, all the all the musicians I hire and a lot of you know most people that show up there have really good ears and they could they could figure out what's going on on the spot. Yep. Uh, but as far as that goes, like. It's it's against my rules for that jam for you to do a tune. Oh, yeah. It's oh, all, it is. It's all improv. Yeah. Got it. Oh, okay. It's like so, truly getting thrown in the water. So you don't want you don't really want tunes. I do not want tunes. Okay. And some singers go up and they'll put tunes on top of whatever the band is playing. Okay. And that's that's fine because like they have to improvise on some level. They have to twist it around, you know, to make it fit. Sometimes, you know. Uh huh. You know, and that takes it definitely takes a, a strong sense of what's going on in order to hear like, oh, this I could do this melody on this, you know. So I, I allow that with singers, but like if a musician comes up and says like, hey, let's play Smoke on the Water, I'm like, nope, that's against the rules. Like you can come up here and start a jam, whatever you want to play is fine, but you are not telling anyone else what to do, and you are not reciting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that is a little different format. So that's uh, that's that's fine. You know, that's cool. Yeah. 
What's the um, it's yeah, I mean, it, when that's, I guess, why a lot of jams end up kind of defining themselves, like I say, a blues jam or mm -hmm. whatever, which I certainly know is not what you're doing there. But, yeah. um, you know, I guess I thought maybe if somebody shows up with like a, something in the funk or blues realm that you guys be like, okay, yeah, sure. We'll call it on, like Hey Pocky Way or Sissy Strut or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's not what this. That's thing. not 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 what this jam is about. Yeah. Okay. So that's fine. Musicians should just expect to jump up and be able to just uh, sit in and, and use their ear to, to jump in on the jam. Yeah. Well, it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be like a training ground in some level. Cause I think, I think that's like sitting at home and like reciting songs and you know, practicing your scales and all that stuff is, is you're training your body and your ear to hear what's going on. But to really understand what you're doing, you have to do it without, without, the, the boxes already established right and you have to do it you have to listen to yourself and listen to everyone else almost listen to everyone else before yourself that's you know? so, yeah like this, man. yeah so it's so it, the concept is i want it to be a training grad so i want i want musicians of all levels to come there and, and work together and um and like if you don't have as much experience i don't think that's a hindrance because a lot of times like for a jam like all you have to do is one thing. You just have to play the one thing that fits, but you have to pay enough attention to find that thing. And to mm -hmm. hear like, what is, what is my spot? Like the keyboard player is doing this and bass is that and drums is this, like what, I'm a guitar player. Like what can I do to build on that and not get in the way? Gotcha. Is yeah. it typically built by the bass and drums and kind of getting the rhythm section going and then going from there? It always depends. It depends. It Keyboards, always. guitar player might throw some chords together. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, absolutely. Even sometimes a singer might get up and start just humming the melody. Right. But what, they, what they're singing is totally off the cuff. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's the way it looked in the videos. I didn't really know, you know, what type of format or structure, but that sounds fun too. And I know the players you're having out are, are some of the best around. So that's cool. Yeah. I, th I think I think you can get you can get deeper doing it this way than you can reciting stuff. Because like what the, the unexpectedness that's I mean that's really what resonates with us in music when something unexpected happens when you right. when you and when you end up in a different dimension that you didn't know existed. You know you're fi you're finding new things. You're like really exploring. Mm -hmm. You know that's that's real music like you. Sometimes that stuff, like when that kind of thing happens, like you'll just feel like waves of energy rolling over you. It's like really everything is just turning into a funnel. Everyone is like really connecting, uh -huh. like really agreeing on what is happening right now. Cool. Like well, and I mean, some of these guys you have been playing with for, for quite a while, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah, but, I, but I always bring in new guys too. Like I, I try every week to bring in different people. Uh -huh. Yeah, and, and, and I'm always searching for different people I haven't played with and try and bring them in, and, you know, see if it works. If it doesn't work, I might not call them back. You know, it's not personal. It's just it's kind of business, you know, but uh, if it works, then it's great. You know, like sometimes you play with something new, someone new and like you didn't know that you, you resonated with this person like that. And that's that's awesome to find that. Uh huh. Yeah. Very cool. Well. I don't think there's another jam going on quite like it. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, I'm not aware of one. So that's cool. And it's, you know, I mean, that's it's, it's a beautiful club and a great section Germantown area for people, you know, my, my group and my podcast is called the mainline area music scene. I conclude Germantown, Philadelphia is all part of that. Certainly jumping on Lincoln drive is pretty easy for us to do. Um, mm -hmm. So, so yeah. And uh, and it's a, it's just a, got a really nice classic old school vibe to it in there. Yeah, it's a beautiful room. Man. So, uh, well, anything for uh, coming up for you musically outside of the jam? I don't even know. I gotta check my calendar. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't ever know what's happening till I, till you know till the week of. Uh, actually, I don't even know what I'm doing this weekend. But I mean, if you follow me, like I always post, like I do, I do. Um, I do like bar gigs in Westchester and at times sometimes and and uh, 118 North. I'll usually play there with a singer. So there'll be like duo with a singer. 
those those are the places that I play tunes, you know, like that that kind of setting is where like I I need the tunes because I need I need to make sure that shit is not going to suck, you know. <laughs> right, 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 right. It's something a little recognizable for people. Yeah, yeah, and it's like you know, it's an energy thing too. Like a lot of times you go to a room like that, you just have to like you just have to fill the space because not that many people really care, so they're not giving you any energy. They're not feeding you. If, if yeah, the, I know what you mean. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If, if the crowd's not feeding you, it's really hard to to really find stuff in the ether. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, I said definitely been in some situations like that where I'm like, why are we here again? <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, sometimes you know, <laughs> yeah, bills, you know, it's a job too. Totally, no, I mean, more, yeah, uh, long story, but yeah, for sure, man. Uh, it, it certainly is helpful when the crowd is engaged. I totally feel you there. Well, I got to make it out to Milo, it's a good thing. I hope it continues. Uh, certainly will encourage anyone I know to get out there. And uh, we have a, another child on the way in about six weeks. So uh, I don't know. Hopefully I'll get there before that happens, because that would yeah. be the, the best way to do it. Bring the um, newborn. Bring your, but give them earplugs. It might be loud. So. Yeah. Yeah. We have the head. We have everything. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Dan, I'm, I'm glad that we got a chance to converse here. Yeah. And hopefully we get to meet. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. You can swing through, man. I will definitely try to do that. So it's uh, every uh, Thursday, right? Yep, every Thursday. We start at, we say we start at 9, but usually like 9.30. And we go till 1. If, if, if stuff is really vibing, then we might go to 1.30. 9, 9, uh, 9.30 to about 1. And Milo is where again? Milo is on Germantown Avenue at the intersection of Germantown and Mount Airy Avenue. Uh, I can look up the address. I don't know it. It's awesome. my Milo Milo's meeting house. Milo the meeting house. Milo the meeting house. Yeah, exactly. Maybe I thought it was Milo's at one point, but maybe yeah, not. But we all call it Milo's, but that's not what it is. Got it. Uh, the, the address is seventy one sixty five Germantown Avenue. Seventy one sixty five Germantown Avenue. Just a hop, skip, and jump from Ardmore, Lincoln Drive. You'll be there in about 15, 20 minutes from where I live. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cool, man. Well, have a great rest of your day, Dan. Cool. Appreciate it. You too. Thank you. And uh, it's great having you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Not a problem. See ya.